Hello, Zero Cans. It's Shadow Fury 33 with another exhibition match stream. Well, might be exhibition, might be part of analysis. I'm not entirely sure what to do with this because this is actually a request match from some players who are middling level skill who asked me to cast it. They were really excited about me casting it and I said, yeah, sure, why not? I mean, I generally take requests. I don't get so many requests that I can't generally do all the ones I get. So yes, incidentally, if you do have a replay you want me to cast, then please let me know. Anyway, this is going to be between d and Heated 1333, and anyone who's watched my stream or cast for some time will recognize the name d -Deebs. Because d had been floundering around at the low skill levels for some time, and they seem to have finally gotten the game, because they're now at 1558 ELO, which is not bad. It's, like I said, middling skill level, so definitely have gotten a grasp of the game's mechanics, which is good to see. Anyway, I'm going to just get to that, and like I said, if something comes up that I really want to go over, I may indeed pause the stream as I normally do during the analysis cast, rather than just going straight through as a normal exhibition match. And afterwards I'll see about another replay, maybe, depending on how long this takes. Well, let's get started. Anyway, it's going to be an Onyx Cauldron, which is a wonderful map for all factories, as anyone who has been watching these, or been playing for a while you've known, and been watching this for a while you'd know. Honest Cauldron is one of my favorite maps. Anyway, we're just going to get started. So DDEBS, oh, it's also really kind of motion sickness inducing with the rain zoomed fully out. But anyway, getting down to the ground, DDEBS is going for Shieldbot Factory. And starting out with Dirtbags, as is typical now that Dirtbags, I mean, it's been typical for about a month now, a couple months in, in fact, since Dirtbags have had their costs reduced. And on the other hand, he did 13, 13 going for Hovercraft. And just going for early builder into a couple daggers. They're much more confident in their economic play and not wanting to raid too quickly. Now this map is a fairly large map, so quick raiding is a bit tricky to pull off. We do see that he Deebs is going for a couple bandits, actually several bandits, about half a dozen bandits. Looks like it is on normal priority. Nothing has been reprioritized. Yeah, it's just getting bandits up relatively quickly. But he did not, has nothing to worry about. There's a dirt bag coming in that'll be taken out by the Lotus. The biggest problem from the dirt bag is the classic problem of the dirt bag, which is that it just blocks things off. When it dies, you get a hill, which can be really annoying. Has been changed. If you haven't seen dirt bags in a while, they have been changed to block everything, not just vehicles. But still, that is a thing to point out. However, it looks like these daggers are going to get rid of the dirt bag, no problem. So it's really not going to be a problem at all. Not going to be blocking off the hovercraft factory, as I'm sure DDs would have loved to do. Anyway, DD's back in their base. They are expanding about the same rate as Heated. Heated, however, has gone off of the Southwest. This is a great idea. It's a bit risky, but it's a good idea to take that Southwest as quickly as possible. It's tricky to do, but it's a calculated risk. If DD's is able to pull this off and take the territory, and they are setting up some defenses, which is good. If they take this territory, that's... These are two metal each. That's right here already about 12 metal. That's enough for one more factory or another caretaker. The entire area is about... 18 or so. That is a huge amount of metal, and that's not even counting overdrive. And of course, the northeast is important as well. Neither, actually, DDeebs is going for the northeast. Slowly but surely, DDeebs is approaching the north, or at least the north center, if not the northeast. While he did moving to harass that, and do they not see DDeebs? I don't think they see, no, they do not see DDeebs at all. They have no idea that DDeebs forces are coming in. DDeebs, on the other hand, appears to have, they have spotted the Either they spotted or they predicted these daggers because they are going after them. Heated is going to have, well, a bit to worry about, not a huge amount. I mean, it's four daggers compared to two bandits. It's not going to be the biggest deal. The bandits have very little chance. They might be able to get rid of one of the daggers and barely even that. And of course, the other bandits are coming around the back while the daggers moving in and they will be, well, one of them is going to die. Actually, a couple are going to die pretty much for free and they need to retreat. Yeah, that's exactly what they need to do. I was about to say. That commander, if it weren't for the commander, they could have attacked, but could have got rid of the Lotus and generally dealt with that. But the commander's in the way. However, now Heated does know what DDeebs is planning on doing. And that does not include going for the Southwest, so Heated's got a very nice position right now in the Southwest. And DDeebs does not appear to want to contest that anytime soon. DDeebs instead going pretty much straight for the main base and trying to block off access to the Northeast. So DDeebs is definitely going to the Northeast. Heated going for the Southwest. I'm seeing a pretty long economic game building up from here. Though Heated is probably going to try to harass DDeebs. DDeebs is playing far more defensively. Their bandits have not been used to harass so far. They haven't gone for any of... Well, I haven't checked out the Southwest. No good reason to go for the main base at this stage. I mean, scout it out. Like, send in one or two bandits every once in a while to scout it out, or maybe a couple dirtbags every once in a while to scout it out. 
don't send in all of these bandits. Like five bandits to do that job, not what you want to do at all. However, Heated is in a much more aggressive position. They are they are pushing out and they're pushing out hard. And it looks like they are are they ready for a battle? I think they're just aren't paying attention to these forces because this is not going to work out. This is this is going to be tricky. He's getting down to positioning and the daggers coming in, getting a good few shots off, but having to retreat once again, they are going to have to be careful here. I mean, the bandits are clumping up, which is bad for the bandits, because there is Lion Splash on those daggers. That is going to be a problem for the bandits if they get close to each other. They have spread out a bit. A couple bandits did go down at the cost of a dagger. Daggers giving 36 reclaim, and bandits... Well, 75 metal. Yeah, it's about even trade, I'd say. But he did pushing in more ba more daggers, and Deedee's actually not pushing the north that hard. In fact, DD is pushing more to the center, and at the moment is primarily focused in overdrive from the looks of it. Let's see there. Yeah, they've got overdrive decently in their main base. They don't really have much else outside of them. They certainly don't have the northeast yet, and Heated is starting to take the northeast as well. So Heated expanding on all sides. They've been constantly expanding over here to the southwest, continuing to take that area. And DDs, I don't even know if they're aware of that southwest being taken early on. That was, like I said, a calculated risk from Heated. Not something someone would typically do on this map normally. It'd expand a little bit more slowly, maybe start up in the center and move over here. But that's not what's happening. And now the dagger's taking out this stinger pretty effectively, actually. Or, well, they were until the bandits came over to support. But even with the bandit support. Oh, these daggers there. Are they committing? Why are they committing? That is that was a poor commitment. Ah, uh, all but one of the daggers gets out of there alive, and that commitment really shouldn't have been. I can understand the logic. I mean, he did was thinking, well, the Gauss Cannon's gonna destroy those bandits. But now those bandits have free reign, and that is a dozen bandits right there, going towards the southwest, finally taking some note of this. Deedeeb's still not aware of anything to the southwest, nothing untoward that they know about, but they are checking, and they are going to find it. Only going to be defended by a single Lotus and a Defender, and that is... Is that going to matter? Oh, this is really tense. I think Deedeeb is going to find it. Are they going to... Are they going to find it? And they... Wow. The bandits just barely missed the Solar Collectors. He did, did the exact right move, it turns out, because DDeebs did not check that. Or at least not yet. We'll have to keep an eye on those bandits. But yeah, they did not get checked. DDeebs is expecting Heated to just do a standard leap... Or not a standard leapfrog setup, just a standard direct metal extractor to metal extractor setup. Going from down here to the center to this near southwest expansion. They did not expect this down here. They did not expect this first. And that has given Heated a massive economic advantage that DDeebs knows nothing about. However, Deedeebs does have a lot of reclaim to work from, thanks to losing all of those hover... Ah, oh, man. Losing all those daggers. That was extremely painful. Well, anyway, that is... That is about even, I'd say. At this point, Heated and Deedeebs are about on par with each other, especially given that Maces have joined the battle. Heated will have a bit of a hard time getting... Well, okay, maybe not so much a hard time catching up to the bandits. These bases are going to have to position themselves in a very smart... Well, actually, yeah, if they do this, they'll be fine. But I was about to say, they have to position themselves very intelligently in order to catch the bandits, because they're not going to catch up to them. However, Deedeebs knows where those bandits are, so there's no reason to have to guess. They just know. He did knows exactly what Deedeebs is up to. Oh, except for this felon. The th Not felons yet, but the thug law ball. Felon likely to follow. This is a wonderful set for a felon. But this is the thug law ball. And as Thug Law Balls go, it's a pretty strong one too. However, Thug Laws are... Actually, Gauss does not penetrate shields. So yeah, Thug Law Balls are going to be pretty difficult to deal with. And over the north, we do have a sh small skirmish. Nothing too major. He did just avoiding that completely. Retreating. Had scouted out the northeast side of the map. Tried to figure out if D-Deebs had built up there. And indeed, D-Deebs had not. So right now, he did does have a much stronger static economy. The southwest is completely safe. Although Heated has not been paying much attention to that. A fact which probably did save them from the bandits early on, but they might want to set up more static defenses here, just in case another wave comes along. I mean, DDeebs is going to get suspicious. They're going to figure that something was built in the southwest at some point. And when they do, Heated is not prepared for it. At least not right now. However, they are going for a slightly more obvious expansion, which has been taken and is better defended, but not by much. These maces are getting stuck, unfortunately. That mace and that dagger are getting stuck in each other, and that's going to destroy this entire expansion, possibly cause the loss of the commander. I don't think the commander can move back. No, the commander cannot really move back into the water there. Bandits able to get through, and not much defense is in the way. There's one defender, and a bunch of juicy caretakers, and the bandits are going to love to eat those up. 
Three caretakers haven't built up Lotus as well, but the mace cannot catch up. And at the same time, the Thug Glob Bomb moves in from the center while the bandits move in the main base. Bandits take out actually surprisingly little. Mace manages to catch up in time. Whereas in the center, like I said, Gauss does not penetrate shields. I think. I'm pretty sure it doesn't. It it used to, but it's one of those things that has been nerfed as far as I know. It doesn't hit health below shields. It might bypass shields as much as it does line splash. Like so shields are probably counted as part of the health. I'd have to get an exact detail on that because honestly, Gauss shield interaction has not come up for any of the games I've played recently or any of the games I've casted recently. Yeah, Zero K can be like that sometimes. But anyway, the Thuglaw Ball is still it's still going decently strong, but has to retreat. This this mace actually managing to do a number on them. Won't kill any more at this point. The thug yeah, that finishes that off. Another dagger comes in, the shields are down, so anything about shield piercing is a moot point, as the shields do not exist anymore. However, Heated is able to at least push this back. Still has the southwest, still has not oh no, starting to expand a bit more, so that's good. Heated will yeah, Heated is definitely going for more defenses, getting three lotuses up here in case another attack comes along. Admittedly, that's not going to save the existing expansion. I mean, there are a few Lotuses down there, but a lot of the Metal Extractors are fairly weak. Heated is basically relying on DDs not knowing about that, rather than on not being able to actually assault it competently. The DDs, if they tried, they would be able to destroy this entire base, even with the defenses that will be built. The idea simply is that Heated thinks DDs won't. It'll be distracted from it. And I think that Heated has a point, and Heated actually at the same time going to the northeast to deal with that. And the center, Thuglaw Ball, well, Thuglaw Ball having gotten reinforcements, coming back for round two. Good use of Scalpel there, though it unfortunately was left too close, allowing the Outlaws to take it out. And that slowdown does kill it. Halberd's coming in to try to tank some shots here, but for the Outlaws, not the biggest deal. The Mace is also doing what they can, but Scalpels really are a good idea. The splash damage is generally useful against shields. Generally, the best thing to do against shields is to have a lot of splash damage. And unfortunately, not taking advantage of the range that Scalpel has, but fortunately the maces are able to at least deal quite a bit of damage before they ultimately die, thanks to the Outlaws. So that is going to be a... well, another retreat. Not much more to be said about that. He did continue to build up, just surprisingly neither player gone for a switch. More surprised on, surprised on Heated's part that they didn't actually go for an air switch at this point, I would think. Air or possibly gunship. I guess Shieldbot gunship is not particularly weak. The Vandals, it takes a lot to build enough Vandals to get rid of the gunships, and the shields do very poorly against spread fire. So Brawlers just be able to weaken down those shields. Admittedly, kind of expensive to do so, but I'm still surprised you haven't seen any factory switches at all so far. Both players going very heavily, and this is 32 33. I mean, we are seeing 30 metal incomes, and neither player has gone for a factory switch. Neither player really gone beyond the basic the basic triangle, honestly. The basic Raider Rider Skirmish Triangle. Not even a felon, surprise. That's the thing. There's how many? There's 14 thugs. 14 thugs worth of shields and no felons. Deeb's going very heavily for the Thug Law. Does not want to bother with felons. Just wants to go straight for Thug Law. Given that hovercrafts don't really, outside of the Penetrator, which costs a thousand metal, don't really have much of an anti single unit option, and I don't believe Penetrators go through shields, once again. Sharpshooters do do the way the projectile works, but that's a weird, unique case. Penetrators do not. Penetrators have a beam that does not penetrate shields, despite the name. Or if it does, I've never seen that happen. Honestly, penetrators are very rarely built. I do not expect to see that at all. I'd be surprised if he had built that. I wouldn't be surprised if it worked, but I'd be surprised if it existed. Anyway, DDBs, they don't want to worry about that. I'm a little bit surprised they don't. I'm not totally surprised the maces are fairly tough and. One big weakness of felons, other than things like sharpshooters, is big tough units that basically cause the entire shield ball to lose all of their shields because the felons has drained them all to destroy the unit in question. That's basically what Heated has for their army. And the maces, well, 1200 each. That's not high, but not terribly low. Enough, and it would be a problem. And Scalpel's doing a pretty decent job, forcing DDs to retreat, but not really doing any meaningful damage. And Heated not being able to really harass over to the northeast. They could actually, if they sent some of these daggers over here, and they sent one of these daggers over around here, that would be a very clear path. And I don't think Heated is aware of this. No, they're not aware of this at all. They're fighting the Thug Ball directly instead, and that is going to probably go fairly poorly. In fact, that appears to be going very poorly. The Scalpel's trying to fire as best as they can while it's retreating, and the Mace is tanking as best they can as well. And actually, 
the scalpel retreat has saved that, has made that work. And they are tunneling to their death. The shield ball is... Mace is coming behind that, and no daggers. Well, the daggers have all been kind of killed. Surprisingly, though, Heated has not reclaimed any of this. Heated's starting to, and this is like 4,000 metal. Okay, in the area Heated can easily get, that's about 2,000 metal. Heated is starting to take that, which is good. Only taking that with their commander, which is less than ideal. But still good. That reclaim is still good to have. Deedeebs is slightly behind as a result of that reclaim. But once again, no factory switches. Very surprising, and no tactical switches either. Not at this point, anyway. Halberds are moving in to tank the Stinger Shots. Very wise move. They are also on hold fire. Thank you, Heated. You have put them on hold fire, doing the very thing that should be generally done with Halberds. Well done, sir. Or, madam. Because I like to be gender neutral on this show, as I've mentioned several times before to many people's consternation. Anyway. Well done, Heated 1333. I have not really seen much halberd use with hold fire. And actually this one doesn't have hold fire on either, it should have it put on. In fact, I really think that halberd should just have hold fire, and there we go, Deedeebs is actually handling that right, sorry, Heated is handling that right now, not Deedeebs, Deedeebs doesn't have to worry about that. They have no shielded units based on move or fire state. But yeah, I'm, I'm a bit surprised that halberds do not have fire state on hold fire by default. And similarly, I'm surprised that crabs don't have move state on hold position by default. Or if they do, I'm pretty sure they don't. I could double check, but I'm fairly certain they don't. And if I were to double check in the menus, it wouldn't be very clear to the viewer. Anyway, doesn't really matter. Heated has discovered this weak path. That's the important thing, and actually has also discovered that DDeeves has gone for a factory switch just now, went for an air fact switch, but has been discovered. And at the same time, Heated is gonna have to deal with an attack coming through the center, having moved their entire force uh, deathballing to the north. They did not have to do that. They could have left this force at home to defend, Unfortunately, they sent that to the north, and they are going to try to go for a backdoor harassment with, or backdoor assault with this. But basically, you're going to be left with a base raid situation if this goes through, and he, neither player is going to likely want that. However, Heated does have, actually, a, I think, a, no, they have a lesser, more solid grass in the southwest. Not entirely sure. The air factory is pretty much gone down. Raven is still going up, and Heated 1333 is going through to that backdoor assault, and Deedeebs has gotten rid of Heated's commander. And it's pretty much just destroying the entire- it's gonna plow through this. There's nothing stopping this. Pretty much now it's just a matter of base race, and I do think that Deedeebs has the upper hand here. I mean, Heated has the southwest side, but as long as Deedeebs find- if Deedeebs does find it, if they build radar. If they build radar on this hill, they are good. And actually, this is a good place to build radar in general once you're at mid-range. But yeah, this- if they build radar anywhere on these ridges, then Heated's gonna lose everything, and Deedeebs at least- Deedeebs has some defenses here. Not a whole lot. Heated could actually, with proper multitasking, deal with all this. This is a bit of a tricky thing to do, but yeah. They could deal with all these metal extractors, and not much would stop them. But right now, Deedeebs basically just has to bomb out this particular dagger. If that dagger is bombed out, then Deedeebs has the upper hand. Because Deedeebs has their entire army in Heated's base. Deedeebs is about to get rid of Heated's factory. Heated has gotten rid of Deedeebs' factory, and... Or Deedeebs... Not just the factory. Actually, both factories, come to think of it. But the Hover Factory here is about to go down, and actually there has been a Felon build. I did miss that, but not before it was too late. However, like I said before, Felons do drain the shield energy when they attack. That is a very risky thing to do, the Thugs really should be used exclusively, and I don't know if Heated is- Sorry, Deedeebs is doing that. Not sure if they're intentionally doing that, it might be just a pathfinding failure, but it is working out nicely. No, it's intentional. The Felon is avoiding the Factory. And in fact, it looks like Deedeebs is not even trying to kill the Factory outright. But Deedeebs is going for yet another air switch over... Where is that air switch? I don't see the... Oh, there it is. Right next to the base. Airplane plant right next to Heated's base. Hovercraft factory is not dead yet, but there is an airplane plant there, and Heated doesn't really have any way of building any more units. In fact, Heated right now has very little left. Yeah, they've got... They have a fairly small army at this point. 3.4 thousand metal. And that's without commander, by the way. Deedeebs has double that. Deedeebs also has their commander, but that commander has not been upgraded. No, it has been upgraded to level 2. So read that as 4.9k, not as 6.9k. However, that gives Heated an advantage. Or sorry, that gives Deedeebs an advantage nonetheless. Losing their main base, though, Deedeebs way behind in terms of resources. And this northeast section is about to be destroyed, while Heated, on the other hand, they have their southwest. Very strongly they have their southwest, and nothing has been built yet. This, this Thunderbird will probably spot it. As it's hovering around, it'll probably spot the southwest. 
but not before then. And I don't. Oh, but that's the thing though. Does heated? I don't think heated has any constructors. I think heated might actually be left with this and this alone. I'm not entirely sure though. But it is going to be a bit tricky. I mean, heated. I just. I don't know. Let's. Let's see. I think I can. Yeah, I can if I just like this. They do have a servant. They do have this one worker. The Savior Quill, right in the southwest side of the map that has not been attacked this entire time, going for a gunship switch. I can't believe I forgot about that because that southwest, I have been focusing on that this entire game. This entire game, this has been my focus, and now it is coming to a pretty nice closure, too. He is setting up a gunship plant. DDB's just about getting that Thunderbird done. But, like I said, DDB's having lost a lot of their economy as a result of Heated's attacks. He did not attack in the northeast, though. I don't know why Heated has never attacked this northeast side. I think Heated expects there is a lot of defenses there. But I don't know. At any rate, looks like we are seeing a very quick comp. Is that a comm nap? I think it is. There are definitely gnats involved. Not sure if comm nap, but definitely comm something. Something to do with stunning out the commander. Not sure what's going to work given that these, this felon here is going to destroy those gnats without any question. Or hesitation. That those gnats are basically dead. Not much, not much is to be said about that. I not I don't know what Heated is trying to do. I mean if they send the gnats to the north, I suppose, that might work stun out of the metal extractors and make DDs be that much more behind, basically entirely relying on commander income. And a mound of reclaim. I should point that out too. DDs basically has about four thousand metal worth of reclaim readily available to them. Yeah, well, easily fifteen hundred. The 4,000 number, that involves part of the area that Heated has a bit more control over. Regardless, DDB's has a lot of reclaim to work from. DDB's biggest problem is energy, not metal. That's been their bottleneck for the last minute and a half or so. While Heated, on the other hand, why they're going for a dozen gnats is beyond me. The Thunderbird, however, is going to finally find it. DDB's finally finds out that Heated has gone for the southwest. The Thunderbird, not actually going to get hit at all. These missiles do not travel far enough or fast enough, so the Thunderbird outruns them very, very nicely. Still, there's a massive shield ball here. A massive shield ball. And like I said, the Felon basically will take on the Nats without question. The Halberd is going to be a problem, though, because the Halberd, and it's on whole fire, that Halberd's going to take about 6,000 damage before it dies. And the Thunderbird down it goes before even doing anything. Oh, no, never mind. It finally gets a shot off. <sighs> Disarming most of the Nats, too. Rather amusingly. All 27 of them. Mike, he did. Why are you going for so many Nats? This is the point where you go for, like, three Nats and a transport. That's what you do to get rid of the commander. And at this point, that would actually make sense. A comm nap at this stage in the game is actually a sensible thing to do. This game has simplified quite a lot, as we can see here. But that's not what's happening. I don't know what DDS is planning on doing. Going for a blast wing... Okay, seriously, blast wing and nat. This is new to me. I mean, I can sort of see where the blast wing would be used. You'd use it to try to shrapnel out this entire shield ball. That makes sense. Just the 30 nats, that, that I don't understand. That, that, you've lost me there. And actually, even then, the shrapnel, while a good idea in theory, blast wings are notoriously difficult to use effectively. There are another half dozen blast wings coming in, but, like I said, notoriously difficult to use effectively. The gnats st are still alive, yeah, the felons are just going to take that out without any problems. And the gnats come along here, and blast wings trying again, and do actually deal some damage. Not a huge amount, but some. Some being the operative word. And heated... This is basically what it'll come down to. These scalpels and the gnats together trying to disarm out everything and actually managing to take out the shields, nullifying all the shields. This is going to be really tough to actually look through. Get, yeah, get rid of the UI here. So the shield's going down pretty quickly. Down to the red. Most of the thugs going down as well, and not all of them, though. Unfortunately, the thugs still have most of their health, and that is not going to do it. The outlaws ultimately saving them. The gnats trying to do their best, and the scalpels... Scalpels have a few shots they can fire off. The Halberds trying to help, and actually have helped a lot by taking the Felon shots. Really tanking all the Felon shots. The Thugs, however, are the main firepower of this group. And the Scalpels cannot really come back in time. They won't get rid of... Ooh, they don't quite get rid of the Felon. Trying their hardest. Trying their absolute best to get rid of the Felon, and get rid of a few Thugs. Like, three or four more Scalpel shots from both of them might be able to get rid of this ball. And with that, I don't know how much... There's no worker on the field. Yeah, there's no workers in the field for Heated. This scalpel is it, but I think he did... Yeah, I think he did realize this is it. This is game. That was a really risky setup. I don't understand. I mean, the Blast Wings sort of made sense, but honestly, I would have gone with either Black Dawn or Brawler. Like, Nat... Like, a dozen Nats and a Black Dawn, maybe? Or a dozen Nats and a couple Brawlers? That would make some sense. 
I mean, at this point, the game is really wonky. I would have just gone for a calm nap, personally. It's just, that's a weird situation. Honestly, that is a really weird situation. That was one of the situations that you almost never encounter. Because, really, the first thing that should have been done about 12 minutes ago was don't move your main defensive force out of the way when you know, because he had had radar that covered the center of the map at the time, when you know your opponent has a giant ball, do not move out of the way. You're putting yourself in check. See, it's like in chess. You're not allowed to put your king in check. Now, in 0k, you're technically allowed to do a very similar action, which we saw here, but we can see why that's a bad idea. Because he would put themselves in a really, really bizarre situation, tried to salvage it, but honestly, it really was very risky. And trying to get in a situation, I suppose if you have a game plan for that, if it's a situation where you just know that you can't win the large game, you can't win the high economy game, but you can win the small economy game, and you can rebuild faster, you can go for that. But honestly, given what DDs had, and even whether or not Deebs was revealing them, I mean, he didn't really know, but he had enough knowledge to know that there was stuff to the north, I should explore that, send one or two daggers over. Don't send your entire army, just send one or two daggers. That was the biggest thing I'd say to take away, is send an an assault, a tiny raiding force, not even an assault force, just a tiny, tiny raiding force to scout out. And in this case, it would have been wonderful, it would have been beautiful, it would have taken out the entire section over to the north. That would have been gone completely. Deebs would have had nothing to rebuild from. Sadly, that didn't happen, for Heated at least. Fortunately for DDs, it didn't happen that way. DDs was able to get away with this, able to attack directly. But yeah, if you have your army on defense, and that's your main defense, do not move it. Unless you can destroy your opponent's army at the same time, do not move it. Or, like I said, unless you know you're going to win that sort of situation. That weird base trade simplification situation that we saw today. So that was... I can see why they asked for it. It was definitely an interesting replay. It was a replay that had a very unusual progression, I gotta say. Although a lot a lot of it was, well, like I said, a mistake. A lot of it developed from a mistake, and that was something that I really, really don't quite support. It was entertaining, but it was a mistake. I, however, there is... Hmm... Another game that's supposedly worth casting, it's going to be a little bit different. Icons and Muddish Code on Iced Coffee. I guess a bit of a palate cleanser. I mean, this is a bizarre match. Very interesting. Certainly educational as far as... Well, sort of educational, like I said. It shows what happens in a base trade situation, but it also shows very clearly what you can do to not do that, or what you do in order to trigger that, which generally should be avoided. Anyway... Get to that in just a couple minutes, so stay tuned for that. I'll be back when I'm back with that one. That's loaded. Like I said, a couple minutes. Stay tuned. The Redundant Show of Redundancy. That's what I host. <laughs> 